Good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Adrian Adams. Welcome to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings, and Dispositions. I'm joined today by Councilmember Peter Koo. Today we're holding a public hearing on LU 590, an application submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development requesting the approval of an Urban Development Action Area project pursuant to Article 16 of the General Municipal Law and an exemption from real property taxes pursuant to Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law for the MMN 1902 Lemley West 117th Street project. The project area consists of two buildings, 138 through 140 West 117th Street, Block 1901, Lots 51 and 52, and 264 West 117th Street, Block 1922, Lot 53. The proposed actions will facilitate the disposition and rehabilitation of the properties as affordable housing. The properties are located in Council Member Perkins District in Manhattan. We're joined today by representatives of HED, and we are going to call our HPD representatives Nelson Chan, Artie Pearson. Hi, Artie. And we're also swearing in, we're also swearing in uh, our developers from uh, Lemley and Wolf, Patrick Logan, and Alexandra Ramos. Council, please swear in the panel. Please raise your right hands and state your names. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and an answer to all the council member questions? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you so much. You may begin. Um, land use number 590 consists of the pro proposed disposition of three partially occupied city-owned buildings located at 138 and 140 West 117th Street, Block 1901, Lots 51 and 52, and 264 West 117th Street, Block 1922, Lot 53, and Manhattan Council District 9. The project is known as MMN 1902 Lemley, and Lemley West 117th Street and is slated for redevelopment under HPD's Multifamily Preservation Loan Program, also known as MPLP. Under MPLP, sponsors purchase and rehabilitate city-owned and privately owned vacant and or occupied multiple dwellings in order to create rental housing with a range of affordability. The three buildings were taken into city ownership through interim foreclosure actions as early as 1973 and subsequently entered the tenant and trim lease program in the early 2000s. The tenant associations within this cluster failed to meet obligations and were therefore terminated from the program. Currently the buildings, as mentioned, are in MPLP and will be conveyed to the sponsor Lemley and Wolf Development Company LLC who will undertake the rehabilitation of the properties to create affordable rental units. The cluster uh, comprises 59 residential units, including a superintendent's unit. However, the current configuration is, non, is not code compliant, and therefore, post rehab, the final unit count will be 41 in view of the necessary layout changes. There will be a mixture of unit types, including eight studios, 16 one-bedroom, and 17 two-bedroom apartments, including one for the superintendent. The sponsor is proposing to substantially rehabilitate all three buildings, and the work includes rehabilitation to the envelope, which is a new roof, windows, facade. <coughs> the common areas in all the residential units will be upgraded with new bathroom and kitchen fixtures, new doors, a new boiler, and yard repairs. During the rehabilitation period, tenants are offered temporary relocation and are provided with a written agreement regarding their relocation rights. Upon completion of the work, the sponsor must offer legal tenants the right to return to an apartment of size suitable for their family composition. All units will be rent stabilized and a portion of the units will be set aside for homeless households. The targeted incomes for existing tenants will not exceed 60% of AMI and rents will not exceed 30% of household income. The vacant units will be marketed to incoming households with AMIs no greater than 80% of AMI. In order to facilitate long-term affordability of the rental units, HPD also seeks approval of Article 11 tax benefits for a term of 40 years, coinciding with the regulatory agreement. The net present value of the exemption is $2,399,887,000. The uh, cumulative tax benefit uh, per unit is, uh, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. The, cum the cumulative tax benefit of the entire project is $8,590,315. Uh, 
Uh, Councilmember Perkins has been briefed on the project and has indicated his support for this project. And we can answer any questions that you have, but before that, I'm going to turn this over to the developer to do their presentation. Okay, thank you, Artie. Um, and thank you, Council Members. And thank you, Council Members. Press the button. Yeah, Adam and Koo. I just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, introduce Lemley and my colleague Alejandro Ramos, who's the project manager, is going to talk a little bit more about the project, including existing building conditions and the re renovation scope and the project timeline. So Lemley and Wolf is an affordable developer, general contractor, and property manager. Our development arm was started in 1991. Uh, since that time, we have renovated or constructed over 1,500 affordable apartments and working closely with various city agencies and state agencies, inclu including HPD. And as already mentioned, we have uh, the strong support of our council member who's provided a letter of support. The, Lem the first Lemley companies, Lemley itself, was established in 1938. Um, originally, managers and owners of apartment buildings in northern Manhattan, including the neighborhoods of Inwood and Washington Heights. Um, like many neighborhoods around the city in the late 70s, <coughs> many neighborhoods were experience of experiencing upheaval and abandonment. And at that time, Lemley took some of the first buildings through uh, the city's fledgling uh, preservation programs, including the PLP program. Uh, we still manage many of those buildings today. They remain affordable and have actually been preserved in some cases for a second time. Uh, overall, today we manage 6,000 apartments across the city, including northern Manhattan, Harlem, the Bronx, and even uh, into Brooklyn. Our construction arm was founded in 1981, uh, first as a uh, general contractor working on rehabilitations, including moderate and substantial rehab, and then later and currently uh, as a general contractor uh, executing new construction. And we just have a few examples of before-afters, uh, some of the interiors of our recent rehabs. Uh, we try to focus on finishes. Uh, you, you'll notice pedestal sinks now in one of the aftershots of one of the bathrooms there. Um, we also focus on uh, quality materials, including in the kitchens, all ceramic, uh, typically wood in the common areas. And on this project and in recent projects, we've been moving to stone counters as well. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Holly, Alejandra to talk a little bit about this project starting with the existing conditions. All right, thanks Pat. Okay, so the two buildings that are contiguous, 138 and 140, um, are found between Malcolm X and uh, Adam Clayton, and then the other one is about a, an avenue away between um, Adam Clayton and Frederick Douglass. Um, the two that are together, 138 and 140, each have 22 existing units, and then the other one has 15, so for a total of 59 existing units. Uh, both buildings, or all three buildings, were built um, under old tenement law over 100 years ago, so they're very, very small, non-compliant units currently. Um, some of the existing conditions that we found, there's about 70% vacancy, um, so there's, there's, about, there's 19 existing households out of those 59. Um, there's significant structural deflection, uh, the mechanical and electrical systems are failing. Again, the units are very small, and the exterior needs a lot of work in terms of uh, insulation and brick repointing. Um, these are just some pictures, so you could kind of get the idea of what the exterior looks like, the crumbling stone um, at 138 and 140. Some of the interior uh, vacant units um, were left in these conditions. And this is pretty typical throughout. And then same for 264, the smaller building in Avenue Away. Um, also needs a lot of work on the exterior and interior as well. And as you can see, that kind of configuration in that hallway, hallway is typical for old law tenement. Um, so although uh, the buildings are not in great shape right now, uh, we do see this as a really good opportunity in order to preserve or for long-term affordability of these units. Um, so the, in general, what we're proposing is that 138 and 140 be combined into one building. 
And the reason we're doing that is because that would take away one public area, so it'll really just be one public hall system in order to give more space to the units. Um, we are losing, we're going from 44 to 27 because we have to enlarge the units. Um, and then at the other building, we'd only be losing one unit in order to, to give space back to the interior of the units as well. So that'll be 41 total, including a supers unit in, uh, in the cellar of uh, 138 and 140. And again, the 19 existing households uh, will be given the temporary relocation agreements um, and be given the right to return to a unit that's adequate for their household size. Um, we've explained this to the tenants. We've held four tenant meetings so far. Um, the council member Perkins was actually present at one of the meetings and the director of constituent services for his, offices, for his office, Rafael Escano, was present at two of the meetings. So they've been very involved in this process. Um, in terms of the renovation, um, again, we're going to do a lot of structural reinforcement, um, enlarge the units. There will be new kitchens, wind uh, bathrooms, windows, new heating distribution system, um, and everything will be compliant with Enterprise Green Communities to ensure operating efficiency. Um, and of course, there will be a new exterior uh, insulation and repointing as well. So in terms of our timeline and proposed financing, uh, we have applied for 9% low-income housing tax credits, which we expect to hear on in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we will have a tax credit investor. Um, HPD will be one of the lenders, and we will also bring on another private lender to take on more private debt. Um, the assumed tax incentive, incentive will be Article 11 as part of the UDAP package. Um, and it will run for the term of the regulatory agreement for 40 years. Um, Section 8 has been made available to the existing tenants. Um, those that have decided not to apply or that do not qualify will be, um, will be paying 30%, no more than 30% of their income. So we will have to income certify those tenants. Um, there will also be a 10% homeless set aside, so it'll be four units dedicated uh, to HPD homeless placement services. And um, as Pat mentioned, the average AMI or area median income rents of the whole buildings will be 60%, which translates to about uh, 1,125 for a one bedroom. Um, and just as a point of reference, the, the the average AMI right now in that area in the in the market rentals is 120 percent, which is about 2,400 for a one-bedroom unit. So it's over double. Um, so with our within this timeline, we've been working towards a closing in the first quarter of 2020, and hopefully we'll be able to start uh, and get these buildings back to good shape um, in April of 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony today. Uh, I had a question on the uh, the existing condition mm -hmm. um, at 264 with the uh, interior stairway. It looked like the interior stairway. It, it, the number of um, existing households was 19. Was that cumulative for all of the properties right now? Yes. yes and how many are, are occupying 264 right now? Five households. Five and who's maintaining the uh, premises right now? It, to me, it looks very dangerous. The pictures here look very dangerous. So we we are um, we took over property management as of March first. Um, all of the vacant so the pictures of the interior units those are all vacant and those are locked. Um, so we do have a super on site. He doesn't live on site right now, but he is maintaining the properties every day as of March 1st. And um, the tenants call him, you know, if they need any minor repairs. Mm -hmm. And we have had to make, you know, minor repairs within the occupied units. But otherwise, we're taking care of everything else. Okay. And I would add that, um, as Alejandro mentioned, we're offering, along with HPD, Section 8 to all tenants. And as soon as they receive that Section 8, we're looking to move them out of the properties for the duration of the rehabilitation. What's their rent right now? Um, average is $135. Um, so some of them pay two something or three something, but that's the average. And coming in, 60% of anyway, 1,125 for one bedroom. For a one yeah. bedroom, correct. Okay, thank you. We've been joined by Council Member Barron. Questions? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So to the question of the rents, those 
existing tenants, of which you say there are 19, when they, you're going to have them moved out as you do the renovation, is that what you're saying? Correct. So because of the condition of the buildings, um, we cannot do, we tried to see if we could do it with tenant in place, but the structural um, quality wouldn't allow us. So they'll be moved a couple of months prior to, or as some of them as soon as they get their Section 8 vouchers, which some have, um, and be giving temporary relocation agreements, which states they have the right to return. And then as we finish their units, we'll move them back. Will they return to units with the same number of bedrooms? So the ones that have applied for Section 8, that is determined by HPD um, because they have to meet a certain, it depends on the household size. And then the ones that uh, decided not to apply for Section 8, um, then they will be given, yes, the same bedroom number. So they have to meet the criteria that uh, HPD has for that? For Section 8, Section correct. 8, yes. And what about the rent? How much of an increase will they experience in terms of what they're paying now as to when they return? So all of them will be paying 30% of their income, so it completely depends on, on that household. Um, so have you done an analysis to see what that dollar amount would be for those that are returning? How much of an increase that would be for them? For, we have we have not collected full um, we have we have to income certify them prior to construction closing um, but we have not done that full analysis yet we're still gathering that information my question would be uh, what that number is mm -hmm. because even though you're saying 30 percent mm -hmm. if these are tenants who may have lived here for a number of years there that may be much lower than 30% of their income. So I just want to know what those dollar amounts are. Right. And I did have another question. Oh, are any of these existing tenants, are they all tenants or are there any shareholders? They're all tenants. Okay. The rental property. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Okay, thank you very much for your testimony, panel. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see any members of the public who wish to testify on these items, so you are excused. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no further members of the public who wish to testify on these items, I now close today's hearing, and this application will be laid over. I'd like to thank members of the public, my colleagues, council and land use staff, for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>